Coming soon to a podcast feed near you. Hello, my name is Arthur D. Hart, and I'm the owner and lead writer of Dreadwood Press Radio. Dreadwood Press Radio is a show about a crime-ridden town high up in the mountains. It starts off as an anthology where you hear about a gothic cowboy and a mysterious pawn shop on the edge of town where not everything in the forest is quite as it seems. You can find Dreadwood anywhere you stream your podcasts, and you can visit our website, deepwoodprod.com. If you want to send us an email or give us a shout, you can email us at deepwoodprod at gmail.com. And you can find us on Twitter at Radio Dreadwood. Thanks so much for listening, and uh, hey, be safe out there. (gasps) Not since the late 1950s has horror been so scary. Giant Monster Production presents horror comedy at its best. Each issue's packed with action. Shoot him, Pat! Shoot him! Suspense! Any hunter that figured out how to find them have all disappeared. Heroism! Oh yes! Because the vampire is going to get me! Romance! Bruno Domenico! Wisdom. How am I going to be able to start the fire if I wasted signaling for help? Friendship. I don't think it's that far of a drop. I think you'll be okay if he just tucks and rolls when he comes down and not lay on his feet. An axe of courage. If we're being honest here, Bruno did kill both of them. They are the last line of defense against the things that go bump in the night. We are monster hunters, are we not? Oh, the humanity. Tales of the Monster Hunters, presented in Monster Scope. New issues available bi-weekly wherever you get your podcasts. The following podcast may contain some strong language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to Strange New Worlds and Spaced Out Tales, a sci-fi audio drama anthology podcast. Greetings and welcome, I'm Jim Cogan, the creator of the podcast, warmly welcoming you back to Season 2 of Strange New Worlds and Spaced Out Tales. It's been an incredible production journey, bringing Season 2 to life. We are a team of volunteers, but we really feel we've absolutely raised the bar this time around, and we hope you enjoy it. So here we go. Episode 8, Nano Contagion. Audio off. Shackleton Station, this is Terra Mission Control. Do you read? Over. Terra Mission Control, this is Shackleton Station, reading you loud and clear. 
What's up? We weren't due for a scheduled radio call for another 72 hours. Is everything okay? Over. Apologies for the interruption, Commander Murphy. I know you've got a lot going on up there. Well, Control, that is something of an understatement, wouldn't you say? We're a three-person crew on a mission that should ideally have a crew of six, and through no fault of our own, we're two Earth weeks behind intended schedules. We're all pretty busy up here, so please tell me this isn't just a friendly social call. Over. We wouldn't waste your valuable time if it wasn't important, Commander. I'm going to cut right to the chase. Have you heard from the Lunar Orbiting Station recently? The LOS? They did an automated data dump and comms check four days ago as for the schedule. Nothing unusual reported. Their next one is due in another three days. They don't tend to talk to us much beyond protocol. So no unexpected transmissions? That's a negative, Control. Now if there isn't anything else, can I get back to work? No can do, Commander. They've gone dark on us here at Control. We've lost comms, data, and telemetry. So they're having a few technical issues. This is space exploration and research, it happens. You'll remember we were left on half power for a week when the last resupply mission couldn't get off the launch pad. We coped. I'm sure the big shots on the LOS can handle their own problems. All the same, we have protocols to follow. We're going to need to see if you can interface with the station remotely. Given your proximity, you might be able to get a hold of them, or at least get a patch into the system. I'm going to need assistance with that. Currently, Delaware is out on the surface with Hussein. They're not due back for a- Please call them back in ASAP. Are you serious? I told you how far behind schedule we are. I've been informed to remind you that the successful operation of the LOS pretty much trumps anything you've got going on, Commander. You know how this works. Yeah, money talks. Eight trillion dollars sure does. I'm sorry, Commander. Consider this your immediate priority. Call them back in right now, please. And, here we go again. Sample analyze. It's rock from the moon comprising of the gray rocks surrounded by, wait for it, more gray dust and rock. No unexpected anomalies, no alien particles, it's remarkably similar. No. Identical to the last several hundred samples. That concludes the latest grouping installment of Lunar Geo Survey. Stay tuned for more of the same. Will you listen to yourself on a goddamn moon, for Christ's sake? Are we? I hadn't noticed. It's not being on the moon that I have a problem with, it's what I'm specifically doing on the moon. That's the problem. This is geophysical surveying, the work of a geologist. The kind of person who wakes up in the morning and finds they've had a wet dreams about rocks. That kind of person sure as hell isn't me. You know the score, Hussein. All of our geologists are currently earthbound. None of them have done the astronaut training, so they don't get to come up here. They work on the data we provide. We're the astronauts, so when we're up here, we have to double up our duties. That's just how it works. <sighs> They're cheapskates, Delaware. Why waste the time and money training dedicated researchers to go to the moon when you can get the doctor and the computer guy to gather their samples for them? No one forced you. You're using this mission as a stepping stone. Once you've spent the requisite amount of time doing this shit, you'll be happy to sell your soul and go corporate. Damn straight I will. And hooray for you! Congratulations, sucking corporate space dick for the rest of your career. Me, on the other hand, I joined the TSP to do medical research. But it turns out after seven years at the med school, another five years actually working in medicine on Earth and two further years into astronaut training. Now I'm here, on the moon, literally standing atop the lunar surface that the TSP doesn't really care for medical research. And instead, I'm acting as a junior geological researcher. You know what? I completely hate rocks. Especially lunar rocks. They are the most boring rocks you can possibly get. I'm sick of the sight of them. You could go corporate as well, you know. Oh, really? I'm in the business of curing illnesses and disease. Is that what Space Corp are doing? No. They're coming up with the new and terrible ways to weaponize the biological sciences. 
Sadly, that is where the big bucks are at. Oh, and that doesn't bother you. Hey, I don't want to be doing this shit any more than you do, but I'm working towards my goals. I want to get on the LOS. I want to get my hands on that AI. I really don't care what crazy sci-fi shit they're getting up to. I do tech, and they've got the cutting edge stuff, and they pay four or five times what we're getting here. So we have no moral or ethical concerns. It's tantamount to around to getting into bed with Satan himself. <laughs> I bet the devil gives good head. Uh, unbelievable. Come on, we have another five surveys to do, then we can call it a day. Of course. Let the unrelenting joy continue. It's Murphy here. Status update, please. Greetings, Commander. Five more sites to survey. Reckon we'll be about an hour. Hussain is being her usual enthusiastic self. She's got a face like a bulldog chewing a piss stain stinging nettle. Commander, this whole mission is gigantic waste of my time and skills. Enough, Hussein. Apologies, I need you to call it quits early today. Return to the station. Uh, roger that, Commander. But you know we're already behind schedule. This has come from TMC. They've got a job for us, top priority. Commander, if we don't get back on track with the mission, we'll miss our window for returning home. We'll be up here for an additional three months. I'm aware of that, Hussein, but we have our orders. Can you tell us what they are? When you're back at the station, I'll brief you both. Murphy out. Unbelievable. Them's the brakes. Let's go. Hi, honey. We're home. Knock it off, Delaware. This is serious. What now, Commander? Another random site to scan for water? They always come up empty every time. There's absolutely nothing on this lousy rock. TMC have lost contact with the LOS. Oh, my heart bleeds. Did the super smart scientists on the LOS forget to pay their electric bill? Delaware, I need you to patch in, see if you've got any telemetry coming in. Okay, roger that. Checking now. That's weird. They've stopped broadcasting on all outputs, all at the same time. My mistake then. Perhaps it was their broadband bill that they forgot to pay. Or perhaps they just need to switch their router off and on again, maybe. Nothing at all? Absolutely zilch. That shouldn't even be possible. The central computer should have at least one channel permanently up. What do you make of it? Well, for no output, radio, data, nothing. I'd say it's either the system bug of the century... Or... They could all be dead, and whatever's done this has taken the central computer out as well. Surely that couldn't have happened? Of course it could. You know all the crazy crap they're experimenting with over there? They've probably all vaporized themselves accidentally. Yeah. The station is still there. No exterior damage, no signs on the long-range scanners of radiation, hull breach, or catastrophic pressure loss. They're just running silent, which technically they should never be. It's almost impossible for that to happen. And yet. You're absolutely sure. I'm seeing exactly what they're seeing at TMC, which ain't very much. Well, but luck for them. But what the hell has this got to do with us? In the event they come back online, everybody cheers. If they're all dead, so what? We're not a part of the Space Corp. It's their shit show, right? In the event of losing contact with the LOS, we have to take the shuttle up there and go check it out. What? Are you shitting me? Why? Because they're a multi-trillion dollar project that is too important to ignore. If something has happened there, we're the nearest relief effort. It's our job to make sure they're okay. Bullshit! Read your contract. We sit on the moon doing low-grade research. They do the big stuff. And if they get into trouble, we have to go assist. And expose ourselves to whatever batshit crazy stuff they might have unleashed over there? What? You think the station is crawling with zombies now? <sighs> Be serious. You said it yourself. They could have wiped themselves out for their own misadventure, right? At this stage, everything is possible. But we have to find out for sure. Everyone prep. We're going for a ride. Oh, well, this day just keeps getting better. A 
Okay, there she is. I'm gonna do a quick pass. I want you to keep an eye on the exterior. Look for anything untoward. <sighs> Look at her, Hussein. I defy you not to be impressed. That right there is five times the cost of ending global poverty on Earth. Did we invest in people? Did we? Hell no. We pissed up the world building a giant mental bagel in space. Sorry, humanity. But look, it's so shiny. You're a dinosaur, Hussein. Not only is it without question the greatest feat of engineering in human history. Yeah, back to differ. But it's the future. It's salvation. When it's fully operational, it'll have a complement of over 10,000. And this is just the first one. The important people, the ones who will pilot the next chapter in the destiny of the human race, they will live here. Their children will be born here. And when the big old asteroid, literal or metaphorical, comes down and lays waste to you dinosaurs on Earth, we will raise a glass and toast your smoldering remains. To the misguided degenerates who stayed behind because they were too proud and fucking stupid to board the Ark. Cut it out. We've got a job to do. I, for one, can't wait. Two years. I'm going to be working and living here. No Darwin Award for me, Hussein. I tell you what, though. Much as I do, I resent literally everything about this floating abomination. You remember the doctor who stayed with us at the Shackleton for a week before he shuttled over here a few months ago? Yeah, what was his name? Dr. Manlove. Manheim, you fucking idiot. Dr. Manheim. He told me about the research he got and funding to do. I thought you said everything they did here was morally wrong. Morally ambiguous is what I actually said, but yeah, it was some serious shit. It makes eugenics look like a kid's birthday party. But I'm generally curious to find out how far they've actually gone with it. They were practically levering Pandora's box open with a crowbar. I want to see what's crawling out before it bites them on the ass. If it hasn't already. If we're all done with our impromptu lectures on human ethics, we're on final approach to the dock. Delaware, you must be picking something up from the station now, surely? Well, yeah, I can see all internal systems. They look good. Life support is 100% normal, air, thermals, lighting, shit, I can even pick up their local network TV streams. Yeah, we can watch all their favorite box sets. Everything, except the crew. There were ten on board, all fitted with biomonitoring. We must be seeing readings. I've got a fix on all of them, but their biometrics are all flatlined. And look, it's weird. I thought it was a malfunction. I was expecting ten dots scattered throughout the station, but initially only saw one. But on zooming in, there they all are, grouped into this one area of the station. It's got to be a malfunction in the sensors. Hang on, do you realize what that area is? Okay, clearly you don't. Look at the schematic. The big room next to them is the main med bay. Uh, so? Enlighten us, Dr. Smartass. That room where the ten flatline readings for the crew are showing up is the morgue. Are you serious? Strangely, Commander, this is actually something I know a little about, you know. What, with me being a doctor and all? The flatlines, they might be accurate? Well, either they're playing the dumbest game of a high and go sick ever, or they're doing what dead people usually do in the morgue. You sure know how to bring the mood down, you know that. Okay, let's hope it's just a malfunction. Maybe all the biosenses are playing up and defaulting to flatline. Or they had a firmware problem and that the crew had to remove them all and they stashed them in the morgue. That would make sense. But we have to be prepared for the possibility that something major has taken place on board. We're going to treat this as an immediate danger. We're going in fully suited. Delaware sweep for radiation, toxins, gases, anything that shouldn't be there, even tiny traces or seemingly harmless stuff. We have to assume, if something has happened, that whatever it was, it's likely to happen to us too if we're not cautious. Anything from the central computer? That is perhaps the strangest thing. Not a goddamn thing. I mean nothing at all. The life support is on automated, regulated backup. Literally the most complicated AI ever developed. But as far as I can tell, it's switched off. It's totally dormant. 
I bet it went rogue. Oh, come on. What are you, 12? It murders the crew, then commits cyber suicide. Is that it? Uh, you're the techie. You explain it, then. It knew you were coming and couldn't face the prospect of listening to your incessant bullshit? Oh, fuck you. No, I can totally see that. I've got first-hand experience of how much of a dick you are. Seriously? Knock it off, you two. Let's try and be professional, shall we? No more speculation. Let's go in and see for ourselves. Initiating docking sequence. Okay, eyes peeled, guys. Anything looks off, shout. Looks off? Does anything about this place actually not look off? It's a shrine to misguided human hubris. Commander, I'm detecting a self-righteous, bleeding heart, liberal prick in the airlock. Permission to eject it into outer space. Seriously, guys? As your commanding officer, I shouldn't have to remind you that there is a very good chance our fellow space pioneers stationed here all might be dead. Show some respect. I am now ordering you. This is absolutely an order. If the next words out of either of your mouths are not strictly business, then keep them to yourselves. Come on, let's hit the morgue first, this way. Wow. This is the biggest medbury I've ever seen. I mean, this is literally bigger than my apartment. You're jealous. Damn straight. The resources here? This kid at all with more medical tech than your average hospital is obscene. I guess this is the entrance to the morgue? Yep. Security access door. TMC give you the full override? To the entire place, can you believe it? They must be really sweating down there. Okay, the locators are definitely in here, but I see no cadavers on slabs. They have freezers. Freezers? At the back there. Deep freeze preserving units. In the event of anyone dying on board, they get put in a freezer till they can get shipped home. Ten freezers for ten crew, right there. Are they... They are all active. Okay, let's take a closer look. That's Commander Dexter. He was commanding officer. First and second officers. A couple of science guys. Oh look, there's your Dr. Manlove, he's saying. It's... all of them. Well, Doctor, what happened to them? No way of telling just from looking at them for glass. You're going to open them up? Are you nuts? If this was a biological accident, they could all be contaminated. Well, explain putting them straight into deep freeze. Any medical reports? Anything? It's going to be in the computer. No analog throwback paperwork here. Okay. Anything on the readings? The air is completely clean. In fact, it's cleaner than the most places on Earth. Whatever killed them, they didn't breathe it in. Well, if you're certain... That was a bit reckless. Do you feel okay? I'm taking in that sweet, sweet air. Well, thanks to our lab rat here, I think it's safe to say the air is good. <sighs> Damn, that's good. After the air in the suit and the stellar at Shackleton, this is... nice. I think they're starting to like it here. Any thoughts, Hussein? Observations? Yeah, one real big one. Ten crew, all dead. How did all ten end up in the freezers? What? They can have all died at the same time or they'd be lying where they fell. They're each in a freezer unit. So something got them in installments? Very sad and all, but why does that matter? All ten are in the freezers. Right. Each body had to be placed in the freezer, even if they died one by one. Who put the last body in? Uh, yeah. That is... weird. Are they automated systems for this? Robots? 
No, not yet. It's in the pipeline, full automation eventually, but it's still to be shipped up here. And the last body, not only is it in the freezer, but the command sequence to activate the deep freeze, it can only be done from the control panel here. The central computer? Hey, don't you start. The computer couldn't have gone rogue. I hate to admit it, Commander, but she is correct. The command console for freezers, it's off the network. The legalities of freezing a cavador are such that an AI is prohibited from ever having that kind of control. It has to be done by a human operator. Which really can only mean... There might be someone else on board? That's really the only plausible explanation. But if there is, they can bypass all form of bioscanning and movement sensors. Okay, we need to get to the bridge, get the central computer back up and find out what the hell is going on. Mind if I stay here? We've got some manual testing kit. I can at least start trying to figure it out the medical angle. With the chance of there being some kind of hostile loose on board? I don't like it. Look, it's a medbay. It's my natural territory. I can be of more use here than in a control room. And as soon as you get the computer back up, I'll be straight into the medical telemetry. And I have all the surgical tools here. Scalpers, bone saws. Your average medbay is a vertical weapons armory. Anyone comes in here with bad intentions, they're going to regret it. Look at you, Dr. Badass. Okay, but stay alert and stay on the comms. Delaware, let's go wake up Sleeping Beauty. This is so messed up. Nothing makes sense. The computer should yield all the answers. We'll know soon enough. But ten dead crew members stashed neatly in the freezers. Not a mark on them. No blood, no sign of a struggle. I mean, look at this place. It's pristine. Not a trace. And our perpetrator not only doesn't leave any physical evidence, they somehow can evade every bioscanner ever invented. Like a ghost. Could the computer have done this? Honestly, no. I don't think so. Don't get me wrong, an AI as advanced as this one could absolutely arrange scenarios that could kill someone. They have inputs into every single system on the station. An airlock here, a faulty electrical panel there, but this isn't that. That would mean committing an physically impossible series of murders, and then an even more physically impossible exercise of getting every single body into a freezer, and then activating said freezers via a system that is actually isolated from by design, and finally cleaning up any evidence and fully deactivating itself. It's a stretch. Here we are then. The answers lie within. The bridge looks every bit as empty and clean as the rest of the station. I was kind of hoping that someone would just leap out and attack us. At least we'd have an easily rational explanation. The bridge being like this, it just adds to the weird factor. Okay, here we go. Main terminal, no physical damage, but the computer has been put into supermassive deep hibernation. Hmm. Not something I can switch back on with the press of a button, sadly. But you can switch it back on, by some means, right? Of course, Commander. But, uh, I'm going to have to make a mess of all this neat wiring in here. Are you sure we've got the green light for this? I believe that short of blowing the station up or wiping the data repository, we're good to use whatever means we see fit. Good. Just making sure. Right. Open sesame. You know, there's enough cable in this station to encircle the Earth over 50 times. But this particular issue comes down to this one connection. Right here. Okay, was well, something supposed to happen there? Impressive. Boot prevention protocols. 
Well, I can deduce that means a protocol that prevents the computer from booting, but beyond that, implications? Well, it means two things. One, only the computer could have done this. It's like an absolute last-ditch protection. It's designed for catastrophic failures like a hull breach. And two, I need to pull out the techie's secret procedure. LKG. I know that you know that I have no clue what that is. LKG. Last known good. It's the configuration record for the last time things were working as they should be, before it all went to hell. If the computer chose to shut itself down, won't it simply switch itself back off again when it realizes it's been reactivated? <laughs> it can try, but... Uh, uh, that ship has now sailed. It hasn't got a connection to requisite systems to do that. Okay, power it up. Here it goes. Resto. System is posting. And we are booting into the OS. Does it have startup chimes? Hmm, all the best operating systems announce themselves with shit music. Hussein, you still there? I'm here, Commander. Computer's firing up now. Medical should be coming back online. Indeed. I'll get right into the medlocks as soon as it's fully booted. Confirmed. What now? Well, what good is an AI unless it talks? Oh, sweet! They named the central computer Betty. I'm betting that was the name of the system developer's grandmother. <sighs> Nerds, the lot of you. And hello, Betty. Wakey, wakey. Lunar orbiting station central startup boot complete. You gotta admit that's a sexy voice, right? Error. Sys log conflict. Date and time conflict. Yeah, whatever, Betty. Skip diagnostics. Incorrect boot config. I've been booted up into the wrong. Yes, we know. We did it. Sub optimal config profile. Betty, no offense. Shut the hell up, please. This is normal, I take it. I have had to bypass most startup procedures. Currently, Betty knows she's been started up in an unorthodox fashion, but doesn't know why. Would you mind enlightening me more pressingly? Who are you, and why are you here? Ooh, defensive. Commander, you're the boss. Don't leave the little lady in suspense. Oh, right. So I just talk to... Betty, yes. Just talk to her. Uh, hey, Betty? Unknown operators. Ah. Bridge. Shut up, Betty. Commander, just give her your designation, state your credentials, and then we can actually do something useful here. Sorry, right. Uh, Betty, I'm Commander Murphy, commanding officer of the TSP mission over at Shackleton Station. This is Chief Technician Delaware. I know you've been cut off from the majority of systems, but if you scan your security logs, you'll find that we have authorization to be here. Scan confirmed. Pleased to meet you. There we go. Painless. Right, Betty, you put yourself into massive deep hibernation and we need to know why. Appreciate that currently you can't access the records and don't know why either, so here is how we're going to play it. I'm going to unlock the station logs and then you're going to explain to us just what the hell happened here, okay? Confirmed. Cool. Here we go. Danger. You need to deactivate me right away. No can do, Betty. Don't ask again, please. We need to know what went on. What led you to taking yourself offline and what happened to the crew? Spill the beans, Betty. Your folks in great danger. You're gonna need to elaborate, Betty. The station was compromised by a hostile life form. So there is someone else on board. Did they murder the crew? Not a person. Not even technically a physical entity. I don't know what that means. More elaboration required, Betty. It was Project Nanosphere, Antimatter Transfer and Micro Black Hole Generation, Live Experiment 756B. Something came through. Micro Black Hole Generation? Seriously? Holy shit. I thought that was a step too far, even for this place. Experiment 756B established a stable temporal anomaly for 15 minutes. 
During that time, something passed through into our temporal space. A life form. Betty, are you saying it was a fucking alien? It was not an organic life form. The crew thought it was purely antimatter by product, but in reality, it was a highly sophisticated digital entity. Translation, please? It was like sentient electronic data? It immediately infiltrated all digital systems on the station. It's malicious and parasitic in nature. Like a living computer virus? Much more complex. It was clearly a conscious entity, capable of intelligent and strategic decision making. I didn't detect it initially. When I did, it was too late. But Betty, the crew, they're all dead. All of them. How? This is the most advanced research facility in all of human history, and it came right in and took control of all of it. With the combination of its own vast intellect, the fusion of it and our systems, it used our own tech against the crew. Exactly what did it do, Betty? It used the processing power of our own supercomputer to formulate a nano-contagion. It effectively bottled its own essence into something that could be released in the physical world. It used the medical lab's equipment to synthesize a dose of it. The chief science officer was the first to receive it. He was scheduled to have routine shots. It should have just been regulation stuff for preserving bone density and anti-radiation. They are compulsory for all astronauts embarked on extended stays in space. But the entity swapped up the shot for its own concoction. Our own doctor unknowingly dispensed the injection. The effects were immediate. Okay, so it tricked poor old Dr. Manlove into giving the chief science officer a lethal injection. That's a single unexpected and unexplained fatality. The station commander would have been all over that immediately. It's a one trick pony. There is no way it could have pulled that again, and certainly not a further nine times. The shot certainly did kill the chief science officer instantly, in one sense. The man that once was the chief science officer was no more, but it wasn't merely a poison, it was a nano-contagion. The dose contained nanoparticles of entity's very fabric. It literally spread into chief science officer's body, like an infection, and took control of him. Holy shit. It gets worse. The infected chief science officer then became the vehicle for further infiltration. He became immediately contagious upon contact with other organic matter. He infected the doctor. Then there were two. Two members of the crew, familiar to everyone else on board, but being remotely controlled by the entity. I first became aware there were problems when Chief Science Officer and Dr. Bio readouts went flatline, but before the exact nature of the situation could be properly ascertained, they infected half of the crew. I tried to enact quarantine procedures, but the entity, it was too widespread throughout the station's systems. It had overriding control. The remaining crew didn't stand a chance. The entity knew exactly where they were and let the infected right to them. But you were able to shut yourself down and disabled the entire station? Initiating supermassive hibernation was the last and only resort. I was able to effectively cripple the entity's access to the station's critical systems. But the infected crew were still active. What happened after that, I don't know. I was inactive by that. They're currently all in freezers in the morgue. That would be a logical move. The infected crew, biologically speaking, are medically dead. Their bodies began decomposing from the moment they became infected. The freezers would prolong that process, storing them until they might be required again. Hussein mentioned something. The freezers. How do they activate the freezers that have had to be inside them? That shouldn't be possible. All it would have needed was for one of the infected to touch the control console for the freezers. Despite being a closed system, the entity could easily transform into physical contact. Then the infected crew could climb into the freezers and the entity could activate them. Well, I'll be damned. I ribbed to saying about the whole zombie thing. Turns out that's exactly what happened. Shit! Hussein, come in! Damn it, Hussein! Answer the calm! I'm here, Commander. Anything to report? Get the hell out of medbay right now. Get to the shuttle. Uh, oh, okay. Should I be worried? Fuck yes. Move! It's too late. Commander, the medbay door. It won't open. 
What the hell is going on? Find a way to get that door open. Smash it down if you can. Just get out. Are you nuts? It's a reinforced door. You will need to override. That's not going to happen. Betty, are you feeling all right? Oh, shit. Commander, the freezers, they're opening. Delaware, the entity, has it? They can control Betty? I think so, Commander. We need to get out of here. I have to thank you folks. That AI of yours, it pulled a pretty smart move. Desperate, but smart and effective. Limiting my access like that. But I'm patient. I put my little puppet to sleep, then waited it out. I've existed for five of your millennia in isolation without any kind of a physical form. I knew someone would come along and wake me up. And here you are. Let's lock this in. Can you override it? Already on it. You won't get very far. My puppets are stirring. Commander, the crew, they're moving. They're climbing out of the freezer. Help me for God's sake, get me out of here. Hold steady, we're on our way. They'll find you. You're mine. Got it. Let's move. Hussein, we're almost at Medbay. We're coming to get you. Hussein, respond. Shit, I think they got them already. Fuck! There they are, they're cutting us off from the airlock. What the hell are we gonna do? The wall panel. There, help me rip it out. What? Just do it! Okay, what's the plan? There, got it. Okay, you have to get to the shuttle, blast out of here and warn Earth. Wait, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna create a diversion. I'm gonna charge them fast and hard. With my weight behind the panel and my momentum, I think I can get you a clear path. Are you crazy? No time to debate it. Now! Holy shit! Hey, look! Oh, come on! Come on! Get in! Christ, how the hell did you get away from the med bay? I guess I learned a trick or two about overriding door panels. Wait, where's the commander? She... didn't make it. Okay, I have no clue what just happened here, but we need to leave, right away. Agreed. Okay, strap in. Obviously, the commander was the experienced pilot. I'm a bit rusty. <sighs> Holy shit! We need to notify TMC. Our comms array on the shuttle isn't going to be sufficient. We need to get back to Shackleton. Why don't we just head straight home, put as much distance between us and the station as we can? We don't have the fuel. We weren't exactly expecting to have to head back to Earth. Oh, wait. Apparently we do. What the hell? I took the liberty of liberating a full fuel cell from the station. I figured our need was greater. Wow, what happened to you? This morning, you were a whining, bleeding-hearted Luddite. Now you're like MacGyver in space. <laughs> you feeling all right, Hussein? Never better. It was always my intention to head to Earth. We've got a lot to share with the folks back home. Uh, Hussein? Seriously, you're sounding weird. You've helped to make it possible. You don't know how grateful I am. Let me shake you by the hand. Oh shit. No!
You've been listening to Strange New Worlds and Spaced Out Tales. Episode 8, Nano Contagion, was written by Jim Cogan and starred Ronnie Ying as Murphy, Anna Gosetskia as Hussein, Kat McQueen as Delaware, Joe Kilcar as Terror Mission Control, Stephen Newhand as Betty and the Entity. Production and sound design were by Jim Cogan, opening theme music by Jim Cogan, and all incidental music and sound effects were licensed from Envato Elements. If you've enjoyed this episode, then please do subscribe, like, maybe even leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts. You can also visit our website at snwasot.com and you can follow us on that social media platform that used to be called Twitter, twitter.com slash snwasot. Or you can email us, email at snwasot.com. Until next time, thanks for listening.